When the doctor took a closer look and saw that the wild dog hadn't moved away from the woman, they immediately dialed the police. If we wish to make an argument that some animals possess at least some sort of proto-gratitude or the cognitive building blocks required for them to feel and express gratitude, we first have to decide what gratitude really means. Even though we've all heard of pets adopted from a miserable stray existence into the comfort of modern homes, it's possible to tell if they're greater than average appreciation, for example, tail wagging and purring, of our care and food has anything to do with gratitude. The simpler alternative is that after prolonged deprivation, there's a contrast effect that lasts a lifetime, making these animals show greater than average expressions of pleasure at receiving a full bowl of food. In humans, no one would confuse pleasure with gratitude. On the other hand, if the pleasure is expressed in a personal manner, aimed specifically at the individual who delivers it, are we not getting closer to gratitude? In an experiment, primatologists say Farth and Shaney played recordings of vervet monkey calls and measured the reaction of recently groomed individuals. The type of vocalization that they used was a call used to threaten enemies and to solicit the support of friends in anticipation of a conflict. When the recording was of a previous grooming partner, vervet monkeys paid more attention than when the recordings were of other individuals. Taken together, these studies indicate that some non-human primates have the long-term memory abilities required for gratitude, as well as the ability to distinguish among individuals. These abilities may be necessary for gratitude, but are they sufficient? The coming story will show you how animals could return the gratitude. Amber Smalls, a 24-year-old American resident of a tiny town, was single. She'd recently graduated from college and had secured a job in the city that paid rather well. She had a daily commute that could last up to an hour to her place of employment. She was also still getting to know all the details of her new career because she'd just graduated. She enjoyed every minute of it, but at the end of the day, she was extremely exhausted. Amber frequently enjoyed going for walks in the nearby forest because of this. After a long day at work, she discovered that the tranquility of nature and the crisp, pure air revived and rested her. Despite her love for the forest, Amber always made sure to keep on the trails and paths she was familiar with and that they were close to the forest entrance. She did this because she was aware that the woods were home to deadly animals like wolves, bears, and wild canines that she should avoid at all costs. But something happened one day that altered Amber's life. Finally, the young woman had a day off from work, and fortunately it was a gorgeous day. Amber made the decision to go for a stroll because she hadn't been able to in the previous days due to getting home late from work with the sun blazing down. The young woman prepared herself and left for her journey. She followed one of her favorite paths, which was slightly deeper in the tree line but offered far greater beauty. Amber was admiring a stunning, colorful flower when she abruptly heard a high-pitched cry. The lady went cold. She was alarmed because she thought the animal was about to charge straight at her through the trees after hearing the nearby howl. Amber heard the cry again after pausing for a short while, but this time it sounded more regretful and painful. Amber made a choice at this time that would alter the course of her life. She was concerned since the noise-making animal was obviously in pain and she wanted to assist it. She started to move towards the direction of where she thought the sound was coming from since she didn't know what else to do. After a short while of strolling, Amber saw something that devastated her. A single dog was lying on the ground, whining in anguish in the center of some trees. Amber initially remained in her position. She was wary of approaching the wild dog too closely because she wasn't sure what was wrong with it and didn't want to be attacked. Amber, however, recognized after watching the dog for a while that it was somehow stuck. So she moved closer in the hope of being able to see what was holding the wolf in place. The dog lifted its head and turned to face the young woman as it heard her approaching. Amber stopped walking when the beast began roaring. However, the dog started whining again a few seconds later. Amber could see what had happened now that she was near her. The dog was immobile because it was entangled in some rusted wire. The young woman inhaled deeply and once more started edging closer to the dog out of sympathy. Amber bent down and pulled out a tiny pocket knife she always carried on walks once she was a few steps away from the animal. The young lady then began slicing the wire. Amber worked tirelessly to free the dog. 
but throughout that period, it did nothing but observe her and make no attempt to attack. After a few anxious minutes, Amber snipped the last wire, allowing the dog to finally escape. The young woman immediately backed up a few steps to give the dog some room to settle back in. Amber saw the dog, who was clearly a female because she was stretching out. Amber, however, became more aware that there was a problem with the dog as she continued to observe. She had a limp. One of the wires appeared to have made a little incision into the creature's leg. Amber was most surprised by the dog's decision to turn and stare at her rather than bolt into the woods, though. The dog then limped over to Amber and began to rub her head against her after appearing to examine her. Amber was astounded by what was taking place. The wild dog was being amiable as a way of saying thanks. Amber took advantage of the circumstance by giving the wolf some pets. The young woman was aware, however, that the wolf would be unable to hunt on her own for some time due to her damaged leg, and that without assistance, she ran the risk of being without food. Amber made the decision to aid the animal until she was able to care for herself again after realizing this. Amber went into the woods every day for the following three weeks to bring the dog some food. She made sure to feed the dog a generous portion of meat and would always wait for her at the clearing where they had first met. Soon, a close relationship between the two developed, and the dog and Amber soon looked forward to their daily encounters. But then a funny thing happened. Amber didn't show up at the agreed-upon location one day. Due to the fact that her pal had never missed one of their meetings, the dog was perplexed and a little worried. But having no other options, she simply made the decision to attempt meeting her again the next day. However, the following day passed without Amber making an appearance at the clearing. The dog decided to go in search of her friend after becoming utterly concerned. After leaving the trees, the dog followed Amber's smell. She soon arrived to a cemetery where a crowd was gathered around a casket. The dog moved swiftly toward the casket. Amber's husband, Martin, was crying as he stood next to the casket. Amber appeared to have passed away. He was heartbroken since it had happened so unexpectedly and nobody had anticipated it. It had been terribly shocking for him to lose her in that way because he had truly loved her. However, the dog rushed up to the casket and started growling just as he was about to begin burying her. The crowd backed off in shock and terror. But when Martin looked more closely, he saw that it was the puppy that his wife had been raving about all this time. He was astounded that she'd come so far simply to locate Amber. Martin observed the wild she-dog smelling the casket. The dog was growing more and more eager to get the person inside the wooden box out because it appeared that she knew who was inside. The dog became so agitated that she even started biting and pawing at the coffin in an attempt to unlock it. A few of the mourners tried to stop her at first, but after a few growls, they stopped and moved back again. The coffin lid finally opened after a particularly loud scratch. But everyone was surprised by what happened next. A hand emerged from the tiny gap the dog had created in the casket, pushing the rest of the corpses aside. Amber suddenly emerged from the casket moments later, struggling for air. Everyone exhaled in surprise. They were in awe of what they were witnessing. That implies a miracle. Before phoning the police and a doctor, Martin hurried over to Amber and assisted her in ejecting herself from the casket. But as soon as the girl sat down on the ground, the she-dog trotted over to her and started to lick her face and embrace her. Amber responded in kind, knowing that the animal had saved her life. Amber was given a short health check to determine what had truly occurred once the police and doctor got on site. The physician was able to establish that Amber had experienced catalepsy because everyone believed she had passed away. This occurs when a person experiences a trance or seizure that's accompanied by rigidity of the body and a loss of sensation and consciousness. The person frequently appears to be dead as a result. Amber was able to escape the casket just in time thanks to the she-dog's ability to recognize that she was still alive. After the scare, Amber and Martin resumed their daily activities, grateful for the second chance. The family did include a new member, the she-dog was frequently seen in the neighborhood, welcoming the young woman with enthusiasm and having meals in the garden. Well, friends, this is the end of this incredible story. We hope, as always, that it's been to your liking. If you liked it, give us a like, leave us your valuable comment, share on your social networks, subscribe to our channel, and activate the notification bell so that you're always notified when we have a new video. And in this way, you don't miss any of our stories. For now, we only have to invite you to join us in the next one.